first of all, I'm going to introduce myself a little bit. I hope everyone can hear me and see, see the screen and everything. So I'm a geotechnical engineer at this moment. Uh, I'm having the bachelor degree in uh, engineering geology, hydrogeology from Bosnia and Croatia. And I did my master thesis in Germany as part of the geotechnical, geotechnical uh, engineering or civil engineer course. Uh, at this moment, I'm working as a geotechnical engineer in mine, uh, but I, I have experience with the engineering geology, hydrogeology, uh, geophysical investigations, uh, site uh, investigations for geotechnical and, uh, and uh, soil and uh, rock mechanics uh, laboratory. But at this moment, for the previous uh, year, I'm working in the underground as, uh, as a geotechnical engineer for, for one of, of a metal mine, high rock. So I'm not sure uh, what what is the uh, background of all of you. So if there is someone who has like some experience with geotechnical engineering or geology or hydrogeology, uh, please let me know. So okay, no one, no one, no one is there. That's like rising something. So I will assume that uh, that you are that this is your first. First time hearing about uh, geotechnical engineering and geology in general. So we'll uh, I just prepared uh, one one brief presentation that's going to include some ba some basic stuff about geotechnical engineering, what the geotechnical geotechnical engineer is doing, uh, what can you do as geotechnical engineer, uh, what what would, would like your usual day at work would like depending on the situation. So at this moment in the world, there's like a plenty of, of plenty of job for the geotechnical engineers. And so that's a good thing. You're attending university, you're going to become something. So if you're going to choose a geotechnical engineering, that's, that's a really good time to do it. So just start with uh, some, some basic stuff about geotech. Uh, so what, what exactly is uh, geotechnical engineering? And uh, why do we need actually geotechnical engineers? First of all, you know that in this world, we have like everywhere is a construction site. And for each construction site, the geotechnical is the first one who is actually coming to the site. And uh, every project starts with the geotechnical engineering, geotechnical investigations, a geotechnical design, geotechnical plan. So the first one who is going to enter the construction site or anything and to relate to construction is going to be geotechnical engineer. And your decisions is going to be one really important part of the project. Basically, geotechnical engineering is the branch of the civil engineering that deals with soil, rock, and the underground water, and they relate to the design, construction, and the operations of engineering projects. That's basically a combination of the civil engineering from one side for the construction elements and geology from the other side as the as our constructions are intercepting ground all the time or water or anything. So it's like a bit bit of, uh, of both things. So to be the geotechnical engineer, you actually need to have understanding. So uh, you need, sorry, I just uh, read a message. Uh, you need to have understanding of geology, hydrogeology, uh, some some basic stuff about rocks and water, how it's, how it's getting in the ground and everything else. And you need to know like soil properties, rock properties. That's the, your most important stuff. And from the other side, you need to know, you need to know uh, some construction materials that, that you're going to use, some structural elements. So you, you need to have the feeling about the stress, stress in the ground, about how the force is coming, about pressures and everything. So that, that that's that's what we are going to cover. Like a little bit of 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 everything. So for this presentation, you're just going to like uh, to get a feeling what what you what you could do and to have like uh, some basic stuff about uh, engineering geology and hydrogeology. So uh, people were dealing with the uh, geotechnical engineering like from the start of the time. They just haven't not, didn't know that they're ge geotechnical engineers. They just did it. And it was like a, just some plain experience. It wasn't like engineering related or something like that. So we have we have tunnels that were built like uh, two thousand years ago. We have pavements that were built two thousand years ago. 
we have aqueducts in the in the Rome Empire that were built like one thousand years ago, and we have some some even some deep foundations we have like from the from really 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 old period of times, and even Babylon that's really 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 popular site had hanging walls, and for the for the retaining walls you need to to have some some knowledge about soils and have some knowledge about about stress and structures. So basically, the people, people, people did geotechnical engineering. They just haven't been aware of it. And geotechnical engineering actually started as a science uh, with the first geotechnical problems. Uh, this is one really famous building. Uh, yes, Charles. Uh, seems like Charles doesn't have a microphone. We he can write the comment in the chat. Any question he has, because he doesn't allow me to to unmute them him. So you can go ahead. Okay, Charles, I will just wait wait for your message and then I will going to answer it. Okay. So yeah, the the first geotechnical uh, ge geotechnical engineering started with the. Uh, with the first geotechnical problems, uh, this is a really famous, famous building from the from the Italy. Uh, you probably all know about that one. Uh, it, this is uh, in Pisa, and you know that's a bit inclined at this moment. So what what actually what actually happened there is uh, as you see on the on the right right picture. That's basically your job. That's basically your job as a geotechnical engineer. You're going to do site site investigation. You will see how how your ground is. You will decide what the properties of the ground is, and then you will decide what to do with the building. So what happened in uh, in Pisa uh, is that we had uh, two different type of ground on the uh, on the different sides of the tower. So because the the settlement on the one side of the ground because it's more consolidated, uh, it was it is like basically softer material. So the pressure of the tower was just bit higher on a, on one side and then just just settle on one side just so it, because of that it's just inclined this moment so basically without geotechnical engineers uh this building would collapse but there is like some rehab rehab that, that uh, happened in 20th century 21th century that actually hold the building at this moment uh, based on the knowledge of the geotechnical engineer of the, of the of the soil that's beneath So how the modern area started and who is actually Carter Sagi? Uh, Carter Sagi is uh, one, one Austrian guy who was born in pra Prague. The, Prague was the part of Austria at that moment uh, in, a, in the late 19th century. And by the, by the start of 20th century, uh, he was actually a mechanical engineer for his bachelor degree, but he, uh, with his work, he decided to, to deal more with geology and with, with soils and with rocks. So, uh, at uh, 1925, 20, he he actually published a book uh, that's his first book related to soil mechanics, and the, the, that's the reason why the Carter Sag is called, called the father of the soil mechanic. So what he what he did actually he he figured out that if you put the pressure on the soil, the soil is uh, going to settle. And what he did is uh, because he was mechanical engineer, right? Uh, he actually made the first first lab equipment for the soil mechanic, and the first lab equipment was the pedometer. So that's the basically instrument. So on the left side, you have sample, you have you have pressure, you have like you're putting the weights, and you have pressure on the sample on the soil sample, and you will see uh, you will see settlements, and you will, you're going to measure it. So on the right side is basically just basic diagram how it actually looks like and how the soils behave with the pressure. So he published that in, uh, in 1925 and that's when the when the real real science started. And from that point, uh, there's like a lot more people that were included in for, for first in soil mechanic and then the rock mechanics just came out of it. What what is the branches of the geotechnical engineering? So if you're if you're like geotechnical engineer, you're probably not going to work like on the all kinds of problems. Like some some lucky geotechs is going going to work, but not all of them. 
So you're probably going to have like uh, if you're going to to uh, like join one company, you probably relate be related to some some like really specific problems. But what could what you could do is actually like deal with soil mechanics, deal with, with rock mechanics, do with foundation engineering, uh, environment engineering, uh, earthquake engineering, or the just like plain geological engineering. Uh, for for here also you can do like a monitoring of the of the geotechnical uh, structures that are like just part of our job as well. So what what could we work on? Like basically everything that 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 is related to the constructions. So the first building is skyscrapers. Sky, skyscrapers. So you have buildings like all around you. You have like every new construction site every day in your city or whatever you, wherever you live. I, I can assume that that the construction is uh, really development. Uh, for sure, in Europe, where I am I at this moment, it is we have like every day a different construction site, and every every day there is need for the geotechnical engineer. Uh, you're building roads or railway, railways. For sure, you need the geotechnical engineer. Bridge construction for the for the foundation of the bridge, it's really important to have the geotechnical engineer. Uh, just for foundation and for the water that's that's going to be uh in inter uh it's going to be related to the, those uh, piles. Dump constru dumps construction as well is really important to have the geotechnical engineer on dump construction because it's a it's it's a huge structure, it's a huge structure that that is inter interacting with the ground. And we had from, from the past, especially in the 20th century, we had huge collapses of the dams just because just because of the ground, just because of the faults, just because of the landslides. So it's really important to have the geodynamic engineer on dams. Tunnel construction. I work in a tunnel at this moment. Uh, I deal with, I deal every day with the uh, with the geotechnical geotechnical stuff in, in tunnels. So basically in in a tunnel, tunnel is the only place where, where you actually need to have the geotechnical engineer all the time during the construction. For the buildings and the roads and everything is just like a first phase, first phase of the construction, just to do slopes, just to do foundation and everything. For the tunnels, you need to have the geotechnical all the time because the ground is changing all the time. As well, open pit and the uh, underground mine construction for the open pits, it's like huge, huge, huge deep pits and the ground is changing like wide of blasting. So you, you need to have the geotech all the time to actually decide what to do next. Landslides, our biggest enemy, uh, especially if you live where, where you have like a plenty of soil around, it's like not that rocky and everything. So we need to deal with the landslides, especially in the cities. Uh, city where I live at this moment, there's like a 4,000 4, landslides at this moment. And it is it is hazard that is waiting to be just damaged properties. So you need to know how to, how to see landslide. You need to know how to how to do investigation for the landslide. You need to know how to deal with the landslide, how to actually support landslide. So it's not going to to make damage on any building that's there or and any any kind of construction. And as well, the geotechnical monitoring. Uh, geotechnical monitoring is like really closely related to all of those stuff. So if you have like a, if you have a road and then you you made a slope there, you're going to have the continuous geotechnical monitoring. Uh, just so you can see that nothing nothing is moving, so that you you're safe. And dams as well. The, the basically uh, the geotechnical monitoring is mostly related to actually don't have to make sure that you're not going to have landslides near your construction site after you build it. For the tunnel construction and the underground mine, it's be different for the monitoring because what we are what you would do there is you would uh, measure the the displacement of the of the rock of the of the you open the profile in the tunnel and then you support it uh, based on the on the properties of the rock and soil. We are going to speak about those properties and, and everything, and then you are going to measure the the, the deformations of of your like your profile. So this is the basic clip. It's just going to like going to show you some uh, some pictures of how the actually construction site for the geotex geotex looks like. And 
and how it looks like when we actually are not we are not doing the, the good job. So this is one construction pit. It's usually it's usually related to the parking spots like garage uh, and for the skyscrapers. Skyscrapers usually have the, the underground underground uh, floors as well, uh, may, mostly for the parking. And sometimes you have the really soft ground, the first layer, so you need to like just dig that, that ground because it's 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 more cheap to actually just just dig it and then then just support it. And if you're not doing your job good, that's what will happen. Your your construction pit is going to be collapsed. Awful awful things to, that can happen. So. Uh, because of that, it's really important that for first you love your job and you actually you are aware of your responsibilities you can read yourself and you, you need to you need to have knowledge about everything that's happening on the site. This is like really good example how the road should look like. This is one great design of slopes. It's a, it's a huge slope. It's really hard to design those things. It's really hard to to actually make sure that's going to last for next 100 years. And if it's not, that's going to happen. It's a huge it's that 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 very like huge problems with, with with your job. That huge huge responsibilities. There's there's really big risks with the geotechnical job. But the reality is you can deal with all those stuff if you're going to if if you're just aware about your responsibilities and you're doing job right from the from the from the first point everything's going to go it's just everything's going to be great this is the the great stuff for geotechnical engineer the bridge foundations it's really really fun to work on the bridge foundation it looks scary but it's better to be like that than that this this also look at, at that pillar on left side this is because of the foundations just foundations for the dam construction, I saw I, I said earlier that it's really important to have the geotech on the side and geologists as well. The geologists geologists are really important in the dams as well, or even more than geotechnical engineer. So this is a one one dam from Italy, uh, one like probably most 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 important dam failure we had in the past century, and it killed a lot of people. And what actually happened there is it's a huge dam. It's in you know, Alps, you know, in Italy. It was in Alps, in Italy. So what happened? Uh, on the right side, there was a huge landslide that no one was aware of. Uh, we call it like ancient lands landslide because it's it's covered covered with trees, with with, uh, with grass and everything. It's really hard to see it, uh, but it happened maybe like a thousand years ago and it stayed there. And what happened when they filled the dam with water? Because the water, water is like basically the biggest enemy for the geotechnical engineer. And the water will always lower your mechanical properties of your soil. That 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 actually happened. You had water there, had like huge landslide from before there, and just collapsed. And just collapsed. This part of the of the dam just moved. That's it. It it, it caused it really, really big, big floods in you know, Italy. And, uh, and a lot of people died. Tunnel construction, that's that's my priority of work at this moment. It's uh, really important to have the geotech on the site all the time and geologists as well. Uh, what would you, what would be your job in a, in a tunnel? It's actually, uh, see, see, see that thing there? Uh, this is just blasted. So after the blasting, you're going to like uh, clean material, scale it a little bit, clean material, and then geotech or geologists are going there. And what is needed for you from you is actually to see how the ground is looking. Uh, is there any possibility that's going to be some some kind of failure? And then you're going to decide what kind of the support you're going to use. Uh, usually for the tunnels, uh, during the design phase, uh, you make like uh, six or seven uh, different ground support standards that you're going to use in the, in the different categories of the ground. And basically there's a few categories of the ground that's uh, like widely used. Uh, one is RMR, one is Q. And you usually go with that. You are using Q. 
sorry, just uh, seeing some stuff on the screen. And then based on the fuel classification, you'll see uh, what what type of ground you are in, and then you're just going to apply that ground support that you you calculate you already have calculated. And but one you're one who who's going to calculate it. Just uh, if you're going to see some failure that's going to happen, you just need to react on it. Or this is going to happen. Uh, this is purely geotech geotech fail. This is uh, just fail from the from the left wall or from the right wall. That's still okay. This is still manageable. But the thing is, in the tunnels, especially on the face of the tunnel, when you're just you're just mining the area, you're on the face, you're in an unsupported area. Uh, what what is needed from you is that you're going to decide how big step uh, they are going to take, and you're one who is actually like monitoring and giving the giving instructions what to do next, and it's it's. It's kind of hard because uh, if you're going to advance too much, the management is going to be happy because like you have meters. But uh, what can happen if you have like a lot of unsupported area, it's going to collapse. But still you don't want like too less unsupported area because it's taking too much time. And like time is money in this, in this world. So it's, it's, it's sometimes hard decision. And it's also, you can like, there are some chairs that you can just decide based on that if you're not sure. And while uh, with experience, you're just going to have different feelings and you, you can see, okay, we can advance them for two meters, we can advance them for four meters, or just based on what you see. And what is your job there? I just spoke about that earlier. So the tunnels, tunnels are pretty, pretty great place to, to work as geotech. It's like something different every day. It's the best, best place to work as geotech. But it can be dangerous, it's tunnel. Open pits. Uh, if you look at the on the left side, it's like the great open pit. We have like a I'm not sure uh, are you at the like in place of the in the world where you actually have the open pits and the mines, but uh, like there's plenty of them in Australia. And what you want to have is like like this, and this that's this basically model of the geotechnical model of the safety of the of the slopes on the on those uh, basically on, on the slopes of the open mine and the right side is just example of the of the bad geotech job so this is the this this is huge this is is really hard to to rehab on areas like this so you need to be sure that you're doing your job from the from the point one to do to the last point that's all and then you're going to be secure just do the things on the left side that's all you're going to be safe and landslides, like our, as, as, I, as I said before, one of the, our biggest enemies, uh, especially in the urban area, especially in the cities, uh, it's, it's hard because you don't actually, because you, you're not planning to build anything there. Uh, if it's just like rural, rural area, just happening there, it's like a, on some country road, road, like you're not going to like uh, do like much of an investigation there. And just when it happens and it causes some damage, then you're actually going to, to, to do deal with the landslide. And this that's the worst part of the landslides. It's uh, how to do how to do uh, investigations, like field investigation on things like this. But uh, there is one sense in geotechnical engineering that everything is the, at the most stable part when it's already collapsed. So this is safe now. It hasn't been saved to just deal with those types. So what, how does the typical geotechnical pro project looks like? So basically first you're in the office and you're getting the project and you just look at the, at the design, like a main idea, like it's usually usually for the buildings that that's like what we are the most dealing with nowadays. And then you need to plan a geotechnical investigation uh, investigations on the site. And uh, it's uh, based on experience and based on the actually the legal requirements and the and standards. Uh, from the US, there's an ACM. From the Europe, there's a Euro code. And like basically every country has a different different standards, and you need to follow law for that. So what what you're going to do? It's like you're going to decide. You're going to plan the investigations. You're going to the construction site. 
you're going to do investigations. I will uh, I will show you some pictures of the, how the investigation looks like. You're going to take samples, soil sample, rock sample, doesn't matter, it's all site. Then you're sending the sample to lab. It, it's good if, if you have a uh, lab experience, it gets you like uh, this best that you can feel the material for yourself. Then you have uh, some soil properties and then the, the hardest part of the job is actually decide are those soil properties make sense? And do you want to use it like that from the lab? We're going to change it a little bit because of your experience. And then with those properties, you're going to make design for, for any project you're working on. So basically this is, uh, this is the work of geotech engineer or sometimes uh, depending on the country where you're in, sometimes uh, engineering Georges are going to do it. Do it. So first you have like a, your worker and your uh, drilling rig. You're going to drill it. You're going to have a core like this. This is rock. If you have rock, that's good. If you have soil, then you can have some problems. Then you're going to like, uh, make this, uh, we call it log of the boring, where you like give the old de details about soil and everything. And there's like a samples you take. This is some test uh, that was done. This is the, some diameter of the, of the of the drilling. There's supposed to be like water water level as well. So you're going to like just describe the soil you're seeing. And then from that point, you're going to make the geotechnical profiles that you're going to use for the models. When you have sample, you just send it to the to the lab like this. There's like plenty different kind of the of the equipment. This is a triaxial test. This is an odometer test. This is a shear test as well. So uh, with your work, you're, you're going to like, uh, we, we'll speak a lot about soil properties. We'll speak a lot about the actual things you can do in soil mechanic and uh, parameters you're going to get from the different different kind of the, of the, of the test in the, in the lab. And because like, uh, Every design is a bit different. Every every geotechnical model is a bit different. So if you're going to that you're going to know that you're going to use uh, one model, you you know what kind of parameters you need, and based on that, you're just going to ask the, the lab to send you the parameters you need, or you're you're just going to do it for yourself. That's the best. And this is the for the last. This is the geotechnical model. Spore connection. Uh, so just I just saw the message. So can you just tell me that everyone can hear me? So what did you say? Uh, I was uh, because uh, Janet sent a message that is poor connection. So I'm, I haven't been sure that everyone can hear me, but uh, Augusto just said that he can. Yeah. Yes, everyone can hear you. Yes. Okay. So this is uh, basically like uh, your your final final design. So based on everything you did before, the planning, the investigation, the soil testing, the choosing of soil properties, you're building stuff like this. So just great image. So uh, this deep construction pipe. Pit, sorry. Uh, this is metro. This is some tunnel there. This is the foundations. So basically, everything you will deal with as geotech engineer. So those are the models. Those are the final results of your job. If those things are actually going to the project. So the for the geotech engineer, as I as I said uh, before. It's really important to have some some base knowledge about geology, about hydrogeology, about soils in general. So just going to speak a little bit about engineering geology as, as a base knowledge, and uh, and actually we're going to explain why why would you need it. So engineering geology is basically like uh, geol the geology no knowledge you're going to apply. It deals with the application of the geological knowledge in the field of civil engineering. To have everything safe, stable, and economic for those all those construction we spoke before. So why it's important? Why the geology is important in general? So 
like every foundation you have is directed to relate to geology of area. So what you need to know is uh, to actually have the ge geological map and to see how, how everything looks like. So you can actually expect some things and you can plan some things based on that. So as well water, uh, you, you need to have really good understanding of the ground water. You need to have, because water is basically like biggest enemy of you and has like really huge influence on the property of the soil and rocks. We're going to speak about that a little bit later. So for the geological features like uh, faults, joint, baths, faults, I'm going to show you how, how it looks. Uh, they need, they have to be like suitably treated because uh, you can have like a lot of problems uh, if you, if you have, if there's fault, fault in a tunnel, if there's joint in the tunnel, if there's like a joints or, or the beds, or like even faults and slope, if you're making slope in a, in a rocky terrain. So the pre-geological pre survey is, is going to reduce the cost of planning work. So what you would do in, in real life, or if you're just geotech in the company, okay, but usually with the geotech, there is an engineering geologist and he's one who is going to deal more with that. And it all, it all depends where you actually is. Uh, so there's a question from the Jane. Which areas of operation? How do you manage the mining and the earthquakes? Mm, so for the earthquakes, uh, for the earthquakes, uh, you 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 have uh, prepared maps at least from uh, from the from the Eurocode in Europe. You have a uh, prepared maps that that are defining the the altitude of the of the earthquake that maximum one that can happen and the one most important thing in uh when there's earthquake is actually uh acceleration of the soil we call it like that and acceleration in the soil is uh much 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 more important in rocks than in soils because like uh like earthquake as a wave is uh, moving the faster in, in rocks. And basically uh, what, what would you do is uh, look at the maps, uh, just see what is the uh, acceleration of the soil, uh, see what is the maximum, maximum altitude earthquake that can happen. And you're going to write it down and you're going to go on site and see is there damage that that earthquake can do? So if there's fault and you're constructing dam, you need to, to look at that fault and to push that to structural, structural engineers so they are aware of it. Because if you have fault in, a, in dam, that actually happened once in USA, uh, they constructed dam and the fault was there it was like really soft material, earthquake happened. It just like deformed a little bit and then collapsed. So basically the earthquakes are more, more job, job for the structural engineers because there's like much more they can do with their structures than we can do with the, with the ground because you basically cannot choose ground where you're building, uh, but you need to inform them and you need to be aware that what is the maximum earthquake that could happen. And you need to look at site if there, if you're making slope on a on a rocky terrain. If there's joints, there is possibility that if earthquake is is, is going to happen, uh, that joint is going to break break your rock and it's going to be on road or railway or on some house, and you need to secure it. But the most important stuff is that you're you're being aware of it and you're you're informing the structural engineers that they can be aware of that as well. Uh, but for operation engineers, I, I'm not sure have I understand the question. So if you could just rewrite it. Uh, 
or just uh, just describe me a little bit what you're thinking about. So I'm I'm going to try to answer it. So uh, also the really 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 important part of the geology in general is the petrology. So petrology is basically the branch of the geology that studies the origin of the of the rock distribution and structure. And petrology is important because uh, of weathering properties and, and soil properties depend on the rock composition. So the thing is, uh, every rock you see around you at some point in the future is going to become clay. And those clays we have at this moment were rocks in the past. And as a geotech, you usually is going to deal with the clays and usually going to deal with the, with the soils. And the really important thing, the related to petrology, is the is the origin of the clay. So the thing is, like every rock, we are going to describe the cycles there. So every rock is made of the some crystals, crystals, some uh, minerals, and stuff, and all those things have like some some chemical composition and based on that chemical composition it can it can actually affect the the behavior of the of the rock and behavior of the soil especially the soil so what we have at this moment is actually we have clays in in in, in tunnel I'm, I'm working in we have clays that that's felt if they are in contact with water so like imagine something being like 10 centimeters, like 10 centimeters box, like clay, like basically imagine a clay box, you're going to pour water there, it's going to, it's, not, it's uh, becoming like 12 centimeters. It's high pressure. So it's really hard to stop those pressures because it's like two, two, 200 kilopascals. But you need to understand that that swelling is coming from the minerals and you need to be aware of, of it because the ground support you're using is going to be, is going to depend on those properties. So what, what we are having is a, is a clay uh, that's coming from tufts. Tufts are uh, like rock that, that, that are made from the volcanic ash, basically. And because of the minerals that, that we're in the volcanic ash, now we need to deal with the swelling clays. So basically, uh, how the just uh, just a little bit how the rock cycle looks like. For the, you have like uh, three kinds of rocks: igneous rock, sediment sediments rocks, and uh, metamorphic rocks. So when Earth was formed, we just had magma, and that that's all we had. And because the oceans were forming, the mountains were forming, the, we have volcanoes and everything. And with volcano, you have uh, volcanic rocks. So igneous rocks like, can happen uh, while the magma is cooling down. And volcanic rocks are, have, are, are, are actually making them themselves when volcanoes explode. What we have there? Is we have the the weathering and erosion of those those volcanic and magmatic uh, rocks, and because of the rain, because of the wind, because of the of water, there's transport and deposition, and it's all going in some kind of the sedimentation basin. We call it like that. It's usually sea, so we have like a plenty of material that that that, that came from the weathering going to sedimentation ponds, imagine like that, just going to the, to the lake or the sea. It's just like material, material, material coming, 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 coming. And then you have, because there's like just material coming one of the, each other, you have compaction. And with compaction, you have sedimentation. It's getting hard. And with, with, when it got hard because of pressures and some chemical reactions, you have uh, like sedimentary rock, like it's limestone. Limestone is like most popular rock. You probably know about limestones. So plain white, white rock. 
So what is the cycle after the limestone or, or the any kind of sedimentary rock? That what can happen is the because of the tectonics, it's going to be lifted and you'll have like sedimentary rocks on the on the surface. That's like 90% of the mountains that we have at this moment. And what could happen as well is that you are going to like build top of and top and top and top of the rocks. And the tectonics is going to push those rocks more in, in the ground where we have like really high temperatures, like where we are where we are like close to the magma. And because of those high temperature and the high pressure, the minerals are going to start to deform. And you're going to like there's going to be like new formed minerals as well. So now those stuffs are called metamorphic rock. And for any kind, and then it's just like a metamorphic rock can melt and then become magmas. Again, it's going to be uh, igneous rock as well. It's just, it's just like it's just just continuous process that's happening at this moment somewhere. And the thing is like all those kind of the, of the rocks are really different. So you need to have like a basic knowledge about, about like every kind of rocks, the basic knowledge about mineralization uh, and what kind of problems you can deal with with that. Uh, so just uh, just saw the message. So every log, every rock in the future will turn to the clay. Oh, yes, yes. So if you have that's uh, because of weathering. So uh, if you if you uh, if your rock is not going to like be deposited in some some kind some kind of the sedimentation pond. Because of weathering, uh, weathering can be like a, it's mostly chemical, and the minerals that got used on the on the that were made on a high high pressure are going to the form because they are in a, in a different condition now, and because of the weathering and uh, it's going to like it's going to happen a degradation of the of the rock. And you're just going to have like tiny, tiny, tiny pieces. And those tiny pieces with the with the chemical weathering are just becoming really soft and softer and softer and softer. And in future, you're having clay. Also, clay clay can form in a, in some different ways as well. So the clay can form in a in a really humid area, like coal. So how how coal is usually making because like when you have coal you you you, you can have uh, the clay as well like at the same time so but that's like mostly organic clays the, the worst for the geotech engineers uh you have really really shallow lake you have like really humid area and huge trees around you the trees start falling in uh, in your sedimentation pond and starting like some organic process that's going to turn that tree in a coal or anything that's organic doesn't need to be tree and with in that sedimentation pod you're going to have like weathered, mat uh, weathered material there as well that's already like really tiny because of the of the weathering and uh, and erosion so with that coal you're going to have the uh, the clays as well so that's basically basically uh, things about clay but yeah the truth is every rock can be weathered and erosion to that point that's become the clay what's the name of the chain on the screen Mm, I'm not sure what what you what you what are you thinking about. Or can you just be a bit more specific? I'm not sure that that I understand it. Okay, I'm just going to move forward. Uh, 
uh, and I'm going to wait for your for your message. We have food chain. Okay, uh, so just uh, just we call it like a rock cycle. Yeah, you can call it chain as well, but it's it's more it's more like cycle because it's like uh, it's happening all over. You have like hydrological cycle as well. So for the structural geology, uh, structural geology is a study of the three-dimensional distribution of the rock units with respect to the formation of histories. So the primary goal of the structural is uh, to actually uncover information about the history of the deformation of the rocks. That's uh, all, the, all the structures you can see in the rock. It's uh, because of structural geology. For the geotechnical engineers, uh, structural geology is important, especially in the construction of the tunnels, dams, and rock slope. As I said before, for the faults in the tunnels and dams, it's really, really important to have it. So, this is basically structural geology, and this is, I'm just going to describe you why, why it matters. So, this is some beds because like uh, sedimentary sedimentary rocks are forming in the, in the layers, like like you're laying a book on top of each other. And you have like beds. It depends, it can be from millimeter to the to the meter to it bed can be like 20 meter high. And because of the tectonics, at some point they're going to move somewhere and they're going to be like inclined. And what's why is that really important to you? Is because you're making slope there. There's a road, there's a road there. You're making this slope. And you need to be sure that this rock is not going to fail. As you can see there, it's like pretty smooth surface. And as I can see here, there's probably, probably already happened some failures. We call it a uh, planar failure in a geotechnical engineering or a uh, engineering geology, whatever you like, whatever you're going to do, you're probably going to deal with all stuff. And what you're going to do here is actually measure deep of those rocks, of those beds. And you're going to find out what is the mechanical properties of those, those, those rock here, but the mechanical properties of the joints, not from the rock itself. And you need to decide can this rock hold itself or you need to have additional support? Another type of the, of the failure in the rocks because of the based on structural geology is toppling. Uh, you have toppling when you have like a beds that, that they were over 90 degrees. So what can happen there? Uh, if you have like a, some um, uh, micro joints or uh, some some small joints there, or the rock is not strong enough to hold itself. Those things there can just fall down, and you need to figure out if there's like any different any different joints. Then the, this is this is just joint. This joint it happened because of tectonics. It happened because of the deformation in the rock. We can speak more about tectonics and the, and the deformation in the rock in general if you want. And your job as geotech engineer is going to decide, do you need support, support this or this can be saved just, just because it looks like that. So this is the third type of the, of the failing rocks. Uh, we call it the wedge failing. Uh, you can have the wedge failing when you have like a, this one joint there, this one joint there. You can have like set of joints that they're like constantly in the ground with, with same direction, like just basically like beds, but they're just joints because of tectonics. And what you can have is actually like uh, two joints that that they are going to form wedge, and that block is going to fail. But it's more the engineering geology job than from geotech. The engineering geological part is to find out those joints and to see how big the blocks are. And the geotech engineer is going to do, okay, uh, I have a block that's this big. It's going to weigh like 
50 tons, it's going to fail because, because of the kinematic analysis. We are going to speak about that in, uh, in some next, next lectures. Uh, you need to decide how you're going to support 50 ton rock above your road or in your tunnel. And the last picture is like a combination of everything. I can, I will do the finished presentation soon. So I'm going to answer the, that question to you. So the last one is uh, basically a combination of all the planners, well, planner there, toppling there, wedge there. So worst case scenario you can have in a geotechnical engineering. Good things, there's no road there. So I, I hope so that they haven't built anything there. But those things, those really, really small things are, we call it the talus material. And it's basically impossible to build material like this. If, you, if you're going to have it in future, try to avoid it. Because if you just move one rock, the whole thing is going to move. Uh, just uh, a little bit about the hydrogeology as well, because it's really important for you to understand hydrogeology and, uh, and the water in general and uh, how water can form and how water can behave uh, in, in the ground because it's it's especially important in tunnels and uh, the most for the landslides because the if there's no water they probably like there's there would be like 90 percent less landslides so the hydrogeology is study of groundwater hydrogeology deals with the, how waters get in the ground how it's recharged how it flows and how it interacts with surroundings. And the, for the geotechnical engineer, the water is the biggest enemy. If you have a problem, first thing you're going to do is deal with water. And in 90% of your problems, if you just move the water, or just drain it, you're going to have your solution, especially for the landslides. So this is basically just graph how, how how the water is forming, forming and how it goes to the ground. So you have rivers, you have lakes, you have seas, the seas for the best, and you have uh, evaporation from the sea. And then you have like condensation in the, for the clouds and everything, you have rain and you have like snow, you have everything you can imagine that's carried water. And imagine we have rain, we have rain there that's falling down, falling down, falling down directly to the ground. And some part of the rain is just going to flow over the surface. And like 80% of the, of the water is going to be kept in the ground. So for you, it's really important to know how the, that water is going to behave in the ground. For the soils, you have like three different types. For the soil structure, you have like porosity. That's like soil grains that, that they're forming soil. We are going to speak about soil more for the soil mechanic and about uh, how the soil is formed. And based on the distance of the grains of the soil, you can, you can see how water is going to behave, how fast it can actually go through the soil. So imagine you have, you have clay. Clay has some porosity. It has like a 40% porosity, but there, the pores are not connected. So it's just grain by grain, grain by grain. So water technically cannot go through clay. It can, but it's a really slow process. For example, sand, if you pour the water in sand, what's going to happen? It's just going to go away because sand has larger porosity than clay. We call it like a parable and imparable rocks. So what's going to happen? is you have clay there, you have like some purple, purple uh, bed there. The rain is going to come there because it's clay, it's not going to collect here, it's going to collect here. And at some point, because it's, here is like really thin part of the clay, water can actually go through it. And you have sands there, and sands, sands always carry the water, not always. Like, not in the deserts, but usually if you have like a, next to the rivers, it's going to carry water and you need to be to be aware of it. 
and for the geotechnical for the field investigation you're going, you're, you're going to find out uh, what's actually like your the groundwater level so I have some kind this is the water level this this blue line this uh water table level and it's usually followed uh, how the ground looks like so if the ground is inclined it's like steep the the groundwater level is going to be like that that's like that's most most simple and then you have like shells shells are like type of rock the metamorphic type of rock and clays and you cannot have water like water can go go through them but it's extremely slow so we just call it like uh, impurable and because of that impurable layer there is clay there there is a river there because the water cannot go through and you have that water table level and you have an impurable layer there and the uh, water needs to drain somewhere because cycle it cannot stay it, it can it can stay in the ground but you have a sense here as well and it have like it has free surface it's inclined it's just going to flow back to the water back to the river river is going to the lake river is going to the sea it's going to evaporate it's like cycle 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 again so what we could cover next is uh, geotechnical site investigations, how to actually plan investigations, uh, some fundamental of the soil mechanics. We are going to talk about uh, stress. We are going to talk about uh, how stress is forming. We are going to talk uh, how soil is going to behave on the, on the depression. Uh, we are going to speak about the uh, lab test for the soils. And that, that's, that can be a little, a little bit complicated, but we can like just do some basic stuff. And we're going to speak about rock mechanics. Rock mechanics are it's like a bit different from the from soil. And we're going to, to speak about lab tests for the rocks. We're going to speak about the uh, in situ test for the geotechnical on the field. We are going to speak about if you're going to be a geotech, it's the most important stuff you need to deal with is how to choose the mechanical properties for the modeling. The model is the easiest part. It's, it's it's software. You can you can calculate by yourself. We, we, we can do some calculations, like uh, just plain calculations for the for the soil mechanics. But you would usually model in some the some kind of software like a, like phase like phase two like a, like plexus. But the most important stuff is how to actually choose the parameters for the model, and then it's going to calculate itself. You can learn it. It's okay. And for the last, it's geotechnical monitoring, like a, like final step of the of the geotech. So there is one question. So about the uh, academic requirements for bachelor degree in geotechnical geology, uh, ge geotechnical engineering. Oh, so uh, for my course, uh, I needed to to do to deal with math, and that's basically all. And they will watch for the for the physics and the, and the chemistry. Uh, it depends on your university, but the uh, thing is, uh, it's really rare to actually have a bachelor degree of geotechnical engineering. You probably have the the civil engineering like bachelor or uh, engineering geology as bachelor, and then just do the geotechnical engineering on a master. That's that's. At least in Europe or maybe somewhere in the US. So it all depends on your university. But uh, I think, like anyone, I, I'm not sure how the war, world works because I'm in Europe. But here, I need to pass like math exam to get into bachelor for the engineering geology. And then, because it, it is a similar universities, I just moved to civil engineering for my master and did uh, geotechnical engineering for my master with no requirements uh how can we manage the aquifers on the construction site that's a good question uh that's a really good questions so actually i had one project uh, where we had where we had uh problems with aquifers because there was like too much water in it and uh, the waters we we need to secure was settling because of that water and the thing is you can try to drain water like in your construction if you're going to like make construction pit there 
and you can see you're going to drill you're going to do investigations first you're going to drill boreholes first and for the, for the pumping you can see how much water is coming actually there and how big aquifer is you can imagine it but the important stuff is how how fast is water coming back so you know how how much water you need to deal with and if it, if it's not like enormous you can you can drain it from the construction pit so basically you're going to like start making your construction pit you're going to dig everything there the water is going to come you're just going to place pumps there and like drain it uh if it's if it's uh, on the slope you can try to find from where it's coming and drain it there so it's not coming it's not going to come to the construction pit at all but if you have like a, a lot of water uh what you should do is uh, make uh, like uh, wells around it and based on uh, based on the permeability of the water of the soil you're going to drain it through wells and if you like um, if you have like incredibly if you if you're like uh, next to the if you're next to the river next to the lake you're in the sand you have like a, you're going to have like plenty of water you're going basically going to build the, the cough like uh you're going to your uh, I, I had pictures of it where we spoke about bridges so basically this thing you can build if you're like building next to lake if you have like a deep construction pit but that's the most extreme scenario uh what's the relationship between our agriculture and the geology uh so you know that uh, I mean, like our culture, you you're going to like grow some stuff from the soil, and geology is like science for any kind of ground. So what geology can tell you for the art culture is what kind of ground is there, what kind of bedrock is there, and because soil is is all we, we spoke about that already. Uh, about the minerals and the common uh, and uh, how how it influences properties, because like uh, we call it bedrock, we have like uh, soils, like like weathering zone of soils, and then you have bedrock. Bedrock is like can be like any kind of rock, it's just like hard material. So based on the bedrock you have, and based of kind based of type of rock you have as your bedrock, the rock has some mineralization in it, and for the weathering, those minerals are going to stay or they're going to be similar. So for the agriculture, it's really important to actually know what, what kind of mineral you have in your ground. So based on the on the on the on knowledge on you about your bedrock, you can have the first feeling what kind of ground of the soil is you're going to have. So you look around you'll see that different kind of the of the like vegetables or the trees are growing at the on the different rocks that's because the, every soil is different and it all depends on the rock that they are like like beneath it that's basically all oh so someone raised the hand so if you have question or uh, just please ask me or just type a message Hi uh, everyone. Uh, sometimes, obviously, you need to when you are uh, making a structural engineering, you need to have uh, a complicated uh, tests. For the three, okay. the most three priorities, I mean, uh, properties of the soil, like soil chemical chemistry, soil physics, and soil structure. Most of the time in the area I am. All these uh, different tests are not are not available. Which you think is the most important one for the soil property to to focus on it? Is it chemical or you know soil structure or soil mechanics? Uh, so oh, thank you for the question. Uh, so for the for the modeling and to actual design, uh, what you need to have is uh, mechanical properties of the soil. 
-hmm. and if you if you're going to work in anything related to geotechnical you for sure you're going to have some some kind of lab there uh there's some really cheap really cheap equipment you can get and and if you're going to make like really basic models it, it, it would work it will work we did like that for like 70 years it, it worked so you need to know like not that much pro mechanical properties it's a uh, one thing called shear test when you have like a soil sample inside of shearing device shear, shearing device you're just going to shear the sample it's 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 kind of simple and you're just going to put like different weights on it and you're going to have the you're going to know like we call it cohesion and the friction angle of soil it's really simple test really important one like you can like you can model everything you want just based on that one test and you're just going to like need some do like some physical tests like a weight of the soil and density of the soil and that's all mm -hmm. okay thank you very much no no problem so anyone else we have a question from abdul yeah thank you very much for this very wonderful presentation it, uh, it, it has actually been very interesting. So um, even though I had some network challenges during the presentation, but I, I just want to have some clarification on some issues. Number one, you discussed about uh, the leaning of the Pisa Tower, which is as a result of differential settlement. So I just want to know whether uh, cracks in buildings is also as a result of, result of differential settlement. And if that is the case, how can they be minimized or eradicated? Number two, uh, in terms of um, dams and roads, like you rightly said, there are a lot of tests that can be done. But I just wanted to maybe throw a light on uh, the, the, the importance of the Atabak limit in relation to dams or roads. Number three, um, uh, sometimes when you look at literature, they talk about hydrogeology, some they say geohydrology. So are they interchangeably used or is there any difference between them? Thank you very much. So uh, I had a little bit trouble uh, hearing you. Uh, I understand the first question. I uh, can just write the second and third one in the uh, I'm going to speak about this one, the first one you asked. So for the cracks uh, on the buildings, uh, that that would happen because of the settlements. Yeah, basically, the, that that's the one one part of your job is someone's going to usually is going to call you because of that because they are going to see crack. And what 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 would happen is you're you, you you're going you're going on site, you're going to see how the cracks looks like. Then, uh, based on uh, on how the cracks looks like, you can see if, if it's from settlement or if, if it's from landslide. Of course, if you're on a flat area, it's not going to be from landslide, it's going to be from settlement. But if you're like uh, on a bit of the slope, you cannot be really sure. So for the for the for the slopes, for the landslide, the 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 cracks are always forming like this. So the bottom part is more apart than the, than the top part. And for set, settlement, it's different. So it can be like a up top part, can be like bigger than the, up, the, the bottom one, or it can be like a, just like a, like shearing. So yeah, basically it's two things or three, uh, but geotechnical engineering got landslides. If it's not landslide, it's settlement. And the third one, it can be like due to construction issues and the quality of the construction as well. So sometimes you basically based on the on the how the cracks looks like, you can like decide it's from landslide or the Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, could you just uh, write uh, other two questions, please? Yeah, uh, I was saying uh, the second question has to do with some trail, trail tests uh, related to Atabak limit, the Atabak okay. limit. 
Yes, I just want to know. I mean, just want you to throw light on the atomic limit in terms of uh, soil properties. Okay. Awesome. Oh, yeah. For the for any kind of the, of for the construction, you need to have the investigations. But it's not just because the geotechnical engineers, geotechnical engineers would like to have like all the testing you can you can have to make like your model as best as possible. Thing is, you're not going not going to have the money for all that those stuff, and you need to like settle for something less. Less, and another stuff is that you have a like, legal requirement how to do it. So I'm not sure how it, it is in your country, and for the for some some stuff like that, uh, you don't want to like go too much over the literature. You first going to need uh, need to go through standards and laws. So for the Europe, the Euro code we call it Euro code seven. Euro code seven is the is the is the standard for the geotechnical engineering, and in Euro code seven, it's all described what's the minimum minimum you can have for the for the investigations on any kind of the problem you can have. So it's, it's more like that. Uh, but if if it's more up to you, uh, if you have, don't have like legal requirements and everything. And you don't have much money to do it. You 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 will minimize it, but uh, for the for the like buildings or something, you you will always try to get as much boreholes as possible. You can like deal with the with the excavation pits for the buildings, but for the dams and bridges and, and tunnels, for sure now that 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 will be that will be like killing your own career. And for the, for the soil properties and the actual planning of the investigations, we are going to speak like uh, in the detail for the some next lecture because it's it's a bit, it's a bit like more complicated than just like putting in the emphasis. That's right. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>